We are back. Well, I'm back. It's been a couple of months since I've been to Dan's workshop. Had a call from him yesterday. He told me to get my ass down here and bring something to celebrate with. Some pot noodles to celebrate with. I'm not entirely sure what we're celebrating. There's a good chance I'm going to go in there and see a completely rebuilt Desmo so that I can stick my kit on, head off for a ride. I'm guessing it's probably not quite ready yet. I'm hoping for you guys it's not quite ready yet because I know there's still lots for us to show you with the bike. I'm going to head in there, see what Dan's got to say, see where we're at. Daniel. Hi, John. You've done some work, mate. Cheers, mate. Look at it. Looks completely different, doesn't it? Yeah, you've managed. Oh, you managed to put the new wings on it. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Look at our hilarious jokes about oh. this beautiful V4R. Beautiful, isn't it? Tell me to bring some celebratory pot noodles. Good there, there, mate. Lovely job, mate. Uh, what exactly are we celebrating? What's going on? Well, we've finally got some bits for this Desmo now. Yeah. Um, just waiting forever, really, on on parts. Are we calling this the Homewood Stretch? Definitely. Oh, mate, that's cool. Show me, show me what we've been waiting on. Show me the bits that we've got. Shiny stuff, Dan. Shiny stuff. So we've got basically everything that we need now. So head gaskets, the head's been skimmed. So, got, so these have been done and skimmed? They've already been skimmed. Okay. Sh quick to show you. Just while we're here. Ooh, nice and shiny. shiny. Yep. So we know that they're all good to go now. Yep. Um, we've got basically 16 oil seals. I've already built one head, or yep. assembly one head. So that's on there ready to go. Yep. Um, it's so long winded, it's ridiculous. Checking clearances. What the, the build and, process. Yeah, special tools from Ducati, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, them, they just don't really sit on the shelf, so it's like you need to order that kind of stuff, yeah. which takes time, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm guessing, you know, this, I don't even know what this is, but whatever that is, and a head gasket for a Desmo isn't something you're going to get no. at your nearest Alphas or, no, you know, your nearest not. decent bike shop. And the price. Hence is, the delay. Yes, hence the delay. Price is. Ridiculous. Go on. So what? 16 oil seals, two egg gaskets, probably best part of 700 quid, 7 800 quid is uh, pretty mad. So we were talking about this over Christmas on the phone, and anyone think that we've pre planned this, but I've got a very similar looking gasket here from your RSV4 track bike. Yeah. And this costs about 20 30 quid. 30 quid? Yeah. 30 pounds. Not a great deal of difference, if I'm brutally honest. Pretty much exactly the same. We'll show you when we take out the packet. Eight hundred pounds. <laughs> That's Desmo tax, right? It is Desmo tax. That's definitely for that sure. That is insane. Happy day. So now we're on homeward stretch. So okay. We can get building, get it done, get it out of my life. Yeah. Move and on to the uh, next one. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So uh, just sticking with that, you know, at the start of this project, we had no idea that it would be as popular as it has been on YouTube, and we also had no idea that it was going to take as long as it did. No. Um, have you, have you had enough? Is it pissing you off or? It's not pissing me off. It's, it, for me, I love it. It's got to be right. And it's got to be right. It's, yeah. uh, everything's new. You know, there's hardly any other videos of this kind of, of, this kind of which stuff. Is why we, which is why we wanted to do these videos. You know, we could have done. Got to do your research, yeah. read the manuals, you know, sort of that Bone kind of up stuff. Yeah, which is cool. We're so you're in that, you now. are very much in the hands of the Desmo tax man. He's, if they want to charge crazy money for these things, you've got to pay it. I know in a Desmo if you don't want to pay it. <laughs> there we go. That's t-shirt material right there, isn't it? Right, I'm going to get out of the way, stick the kettle on, and um, I won't, I'll will i take this with me in case you accidentally fit it, because it looks identical to me. You can have that. 28 quid? Yeah. Perfect. Cheers, mate. So basically, we're fitting these valve stem oil seals now. Just going to put a bit of assembly grease in there, and never going dry, just to give it a bit of lube up. Bit of a fiddly job. I just use. There's probably a special tool out there, but a socket and an extension bar doesn't really take any force. Just pop it on. Make sure it sits. That's it. See up, Dan. Cheers, John. I think it's shameless plug o'clock. Let's talk about the head being skimmed. Who did it? Uh, and, and what's going on? Talk to me about head skimming. Yeah, basically we, we needed to have the skims, mm, like hardly anything got taken yep. off really. Just um, clean it up. Just because there was slight pitting in the head due to corrosion. I want to say a massive thanks to the guys at Sutton Rebore, not far from here. Mm -hmm. um, they've done a pucker job and you know they were quite patient with us walking around their yep. workshop. And I guess they don't... They don't care if it's a Desmo head or a, or a knife and fork, do they? No. It's just a job for them. Yeah, these guys are pros. Yeah. 
proper engineers. Yep. Amazing place, really. Um, but Sweet. no, so we've had that done, and now basically it's just a case of just reassembling it and, and making sure everything's tip top, clearances, all that kind of stuff. So we've put the valves in. It's a, a long task, it's not a two minute no. quick collet. I can, see, I can tell springs. by that look in your face that it's, it's are you saying it's a ball lake? It's, yeah, it's a ball lake, it's yeah. fiddly. We can do it. It's cool. So I've already done one. We can do it? <laughs> We can do it. You can do it. I can do it. I'm going to move more counts. Cheers, mate. Cool. Right, so now basically we're going to assemble the head, install the valves. I like to put a bit of grease on my shaft. What? <laughs> Back to the action. <laughs> you need to calm down over there. Um, so we don't damage the seals um, and it basically glides in and out the valve guide nicely. Um, obviously, this is a dry head. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out, sorry. So before we put this in, I've basically checked all of the valve seats and the, the valve face for any pitting, etc. It is very important on these because they are titanium valves. You can't lap them in because they've got basically a special coating on there that prevents wear um, with heat and all that kind of stuff. So they're in really good condition and so are the valve seats. So we'll just slide it up into the guide nice and gently and that's the first valve in so now we've installed the valve we're going to insert the closing shim which goes on first now basically we've got these tiny little valve collets that hold the valve in place and they're so fiddly Ugh. So now we've fitted the rocker arms in place with the springs. Again, really fiddly. We just install the shaft. Give them a little bit of a jiggle. Slide it all the way through. So this does one and two inlet valve. Just give them a slight tap to make sure they're all sitting nicely and moving freely. So now basically we need to settle the closing shim, um, which is why we had to buy the special tool. And it's basically to stop the collets popping out. Um, manual states that it's around about 10 Newton meters, plus or minus 10%. So we'll just do that now. Now what we've got to do is basically do that on each closing shim. So now we've assembled the closing shims, we basically need to put the cam in, measure the clearance and adjust the suit. So we'll just put that in there. We're going to be adjusting valve close clearance. There doesn't need to be caps on this because there doesn't have to be any pressure being that it's a closed clearance so that the valves basically already up position um, so just a light bit of pressure on the cam itself it's saying it should be 0.10 to 15 is the clearance so we'll just check them so that's obviously really tight which we know we're gonna have to adjust that one we'll measure them all 
properly in a sec. I just want to stick a 10 in there just to see what we've got. So basically out of all these closing shims, valve number one is the only one in tolerance. So we now have to basically take the cam back out, which is no drama, but change the other closing shims to basically smaller sizes to create the gap of the clearance. That is why these are a pain in the ass. Getting quite good at these now. Christ knows how many I've made over the last year. As you can see, there's lots of plastic bags. I just like to bag everything up, just so there's lots of little bits and pieces going on in here, shims, collets, all that kind of stuff, rocker arms, whatever hole it come out of, or whatever groove or anything like that. Obviously, it's important that it all goes back in in the correct order, which is why I bag it all up. Exhaust number one just to make sure everything goes back nicely and you're not getting bits and pieces all mixed up. Found the use of that head gasket. Ping. Skills. Bunch of surf, mate. Skills. I was just thinking while I was uh, crafting our lunch, that if we spend less time cooking, we <laughs> spend more time chasing our dreams. And also, we should make time for our ambitions. Just eat noodles. Completely made that up myself. Are you lying? <laughs> Yeah, just made that up myself. Thanks, John. No worries, mate. How are you getting on? Oh, mate, it's just a ball lake. It's just fiddly. Fiddly, time consuming. Good fun, mate. Yeah, it looks cool. So now we're putting the cam caps back on. Cams are in to check basically the opening clearance. Um, and then basically it's all got to be disassembled to change the shims. So yes, yeah, a long process. Mate, this is the longest process I've seen of any of these things, and I feel, I feel like even more of a spare part than I usually do. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, mate. Uh, I'm I'm probably just going to shoot off and leave you to it, mate. You crack on, mate. But we need to give somebody something to look forward to for the next one, and we yes. were just saying the next one's going to be a big one, isn't it? It's Once these cylinder heads are built yeah. back on the engine, the rest is going to be pretty plain sailing, really. So yeah. it'll be building that chassis back onto the engine yep. to make it look like a motorbike again so it's been a while it has been a while you're sure gonna remember where everything yeah, goes yeah definitely i know i'm not but <laughs> again it's it's there's no excuses for this it's just down to time and this is a good point for me to remind people that this is a real workshop you do have other job sheets to do there are other bikes to work on and that's why this is taken as long as it has yeah there are no more parts to order though are there there's no more parts to order just want to take this opportunity to say big thanks to Mike Rapido. Them guys have been pretty yep. awesome yeah, yep. getting the parts to us. Um, and Sutton Reball. And Sutton Reball, yeah. And Pot Noodle. And Pot Noodle. <laughs> right, I'll leave you to it, mate. I'll see you next time. Cheers, John.